Hey everybody, Ryan here from Rhino Hockey Channel. Alright, here is my first round matchup for the NHL playoffs. A preview for the series between Colorado and St. Louis. Alright, before we begin, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And make sure to hit that like button if you enjoy the video. Alright, let's get started. Alright, our preview for the first round matchup between Colorado Avalanche and the St. Louis Blues. All right, Colorado won the season series five and three, and St. Louis was three and five because there was no overtime games. All right, first matchup of the season was a win for the Blues, four to one, and then a shellacking for the Blues. They lost eight to nothing. Yikes! That is definitely the largest goal differential in this series. All right, next one, Colorado won three two, then Colorado won two one, then Colorado won four three, then Colorado won four two. Then St. Louis won 5-3 and 4-1 to finish out the season. So, there you go. I mean, these two had two matchups the first two games of the season, and then they finished their rest of the series in the month of April, as you can tell. So, yeah, I think this will be a close matchup. I, I don't know. Maybe you get an 8-0 game. I doubt it. Usually don't see that in the playoffs. All right, top scores head-to-head -head for Colorado. Shocker, it is Nathan McKinnon. 14 points, 6 goals, and 8 assists. Next up was Kale McCarr with 10 points. Burkowski with 9. Landis Cog with 9. And then a bit of a dip, because then you go to Rotnin, who amazingly only had 4 points in this series. Considering how well Landis Cog and McKinnon did, granted Rotnin did miss some time with injury. Uh, Grubauer and Dubnik were both 2-1 and one this season, so it was hard. You can't exactly pick just one goalie that was better than the others. Alright, for St. Louis, Ryan O'Reilly had 4 goals and 3 assists for 7 points, and Perron also had 7 points with 2 goals and 5 assists. Mike Hoffman had 6 points, then you had Shane... Uh, Shane, <laughs> I'm sorry. Shen, Bozak, and Krug each had 5 points each. And Bennington was 3-for-3 three three in this series. Alright, top scorers for Colorado. Miko Rotnin had 66 points. Nathan McKinnon, 65. Gabriel Landeskog, 52. Andre Burakovsky had 44. And Kale McCarr also had 44. For St. Louis, David Perron had 58 points. Ryan O'Reilly, 54. Then you have a sharp decline. From 54 points to Mike Hoffman having 36, Brian Shen with 36, and Jordan, uh, God, Jordan Cairo with 35 points. Alright, goaltending wise, you have Grubauer, who is undoubtedly the number one for Colorado. 30, his record was 39 and 1. I'd say he was solid this year. 1.95 goals against average and 9.22 save percentage for him. Johansson, who they picked up in a trade from Buffalo, 5-1-1, one, 2.06 goals against average and 9.13 save percentage. Devin Dubnik, who is currently out with COVID, well, COVID protocols, he's out, 3-2, 3.26 goals against average and 8.86 save percentage. Now, that does not incorporate his San Jose Shark stats, which were worse than that. Then you have Hunter Miska, who was 1-1-2, one, one 4.16 goals against average, and 8.38 save percentage. You can see why they picked up Dubnik and Johansson. Alright, for St. Louis, Bennington is undoubtedly the number one. 18-14-8, 2.65 goals against average, and 9.10 save percentage. And Vili Husso was there, is going to be their backup. 9-6-1, 3.21 goals against average, and an 8.93 save percentage. So basically, your goalie matchup is pretty much guaranteed in this series. Grubauer versus Bennington. It'll be a fun one. Alright, on to injuries. Connor Timmons is day-to-day -day with undisclosed injury. He is questionable for game one, so he could possibly play. Devin Dubnik, like I said, is out day-to-day -day with COVID, on pro COVID protocols. 
Bowen Byram is week to week with an upper body injury. He has started practicing, so he may return at some point during the playoffs. Logan O'Connor is out indefinitely with a lower body injury. Matt Calvert week to week with an undisclosed injury. I, do, I would not expect him or Eric Johnson to play this year in the playoffs. Eric Johnson's out indefinitely with upper body injury, and Pavel Vrancuz has been out for the season with lower body injury since early early in the season. Injuries for St. Louis. Now, their COVID protocol list could be a problem because they lost one of their best offensive players, David Perron. That's going to hurt if he can't be back tomorrow. Nathan Walker is also on COVID protocol, as well as Jake Waltman. Colton Branco is day-to-day -day with an undisclosed injury. Vladimir Tarasenko is day-to-day -day with lower body injury. Vince Dunn is day-to-day -day with upper body injury. They say he's possible for game one. They're hoping he will be there, but we'll see. And Oscar Sundquist, I forgot to delete practicing. He is not practicing. He's out for a season with a knee injury. So, not practicing, not going to play for Sundquist. All right, last year in the playoffs, Colorado lost to the eventual Stanley Cup finalist, Dallas Stars, in seven games in round two. I am sure they want to fix that. They want to go all the way, I'm sure. Well, everybody does, but they want to win the Stanley Cup this year, and they definitely have a possible chance. No guarantees in life, but there's definitely a pretty good chance. St. Louis is... They lost to Vancouver in six games in the first round last year. <laughs> that just has to hurt now, now that Vancouver is not very good. All right, dark horse for Colorado. It was hard to come up with one, but I'm going to go with Yunus Donskoy because he has been, he's shown in the past he can be an effective depth scorer in the playoffs, and he's got an overtime goal, so hey, wouldn't hurt to have him out there. And he's a speedy little guy. But you know what? I, I, li I always liked how he played. I always thought it was dumb that the Sharks let him go for nothing. So, their loss, Colorado's game. And for St. Louis, I'm going to go with Jay and Schwartz. Because the year they won the Stanley Cup, he was pivotal for them. He was absolutely important. And he has not had a good year. Injured quite a bit, and when he was, he was, and when he was playing, he wasn't scoring much. So I'm wondering if he's due for a breakout. So that's why I'm picking him. All right, that's all I got for you. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure to check out my my predictions video if you want to see predictions. I know there are none in these in this video, but if you want to check it out, it should be on the screen right now. Go ahead and go check it out. All right. Other than that, make sure to subscribe, like the video, comment, share, and I will see you all next video. Bye, everybody.